Before we can talk about periodic trends, we first need to talk about Coulomb's law because the principles of Coulomb's law are going to kind of drive the behavior that we see in these periodic trends. And the thing that we need to remember from Coulomb's law is that attractive forces increase between nucleus and electrons. So as I increase the number of protons, as I move along the periodic table, I'm also increasing the number of electrons, which means I'm also going to increase that attractive forces between the protons and electrons. I also see that we have a lower potential energy as the atoms get closer together. So when I take two atoms and put them together, we'll see a lowering of potential energy. But there is kind of a sweet spot there for that because if they get too close, then we have repelling forces between the protons of each atom and the electrons of each atom. What we want to get to is kind of that spot where we've maximized the attractive forces between protons of one atom and the electrons of the other and minimize those repulsive forces. So let's look at an atom or a model of an atom and see what we're talking about when we look at these kind of forces that we're dealing with. So what we want to see is that we have our nucleus here where our protons and our neutrons are. We're not really worried about the neutrons because, well, they're neutral. We're worried about that we have protons in there. And what we see is that we have some electron out here kind of in the atom. And so there are electrons between this, what we call the electron of interest, and the nucleus. And we can think of this kind of as a barrier, as an effect of shear shielding between those. So one way we can think about this is if we have a refrigerator and we have a magnet on the refrigerator and we have only one piece of paper between it, what we see is that there's going to be a strong attractive force. So we have our magnet and we have our refrigerator. And if we have our one piece of paper there, it's going to be a pretty strong force between them. Now, let's say we put two pieces of paper or three or four. So every time we get more paper, the attractive force between the magnet and the refrigerator is decreased. Not because the properties of the magnet or the refrigerator have changed, but simply because there's something else between the refrigerator and the magnet, in this case our paper. So the same thing is happening here when we look at our atom. When we look at the electron of interest here, this outer electron, we're worried about the number of electrons inside that and so that's causing some shielding of that force so this electron is not feeling the full force of that positively charged nucleus. Now the electrons out in what they've got colored blue here in this region outside the electron of interest have no effect on the shielding or on that attractive force between the proton and the electron nor do electrons in the same kind of energy level that are basically in the same orbit as our electron of interest and we are looking at a simplified model here we're not looking at orbit but the idea is still the same, that when we're looking at these, we worry about things that are in lower energy levels than the electron we're worried about, and only those. We're not worried about those in the same energy level or those outside of it. So the more electrons we have between the nucleus and the electron of interest, the more shielding we'll have, the weaker the attractive force will be between the protons and that electron. So the first periodic trend is going to be effective nuclear charge. And what this is, is the charge felt by an electron. So this was our electron of interest that we were talking about on the previous slide. Our electron of interest is shielded by other electrons. So basically, Z effective is what kind of force, what kind of attractive force does that electron actually feel from the nucleus knowing that there are electrons kind of blocking it. So Z is the charge on the nucleus, the number of protons. Z effective is what that outer electron actually feels. And sigma is what we know as our shielding or sometimes called screening constant. And the value of that is going to be between 0 and Z. And so we can think about this as each electron in a lower energy level is going to add about a sigma of 1 to the shielding constant. So if we have an electron of interest, whatever that may be, so we have some electron, and we know that there are three electrons between that electron and the nucleus, and we'll say that the nucleus, we're going to look at, say, Oh, a fluorine where there are nine protons in there and for this electron that we're looking at we say well the Z would be nine and sigma would be approximately three so the Z effective is about six now this is a very rough approximation of the uh, effective nuclear charge but if we're just talking about relative values it works just fine 
So here is our first periodic trend, and I want to point out a couple of things before I talk about what that trend is. I want you to notice that I've got an arrow pointing up and over, and we're going to have several periodic trends. I'm going to kind of keep adding to this graph so you can see which ones are alike and which ones are similar. So we either have up and to the right or down and to the left. So we've got those two sets of trends. The other thing I want you to realize is that when we look at the pictures that I'm showing you here, these trends versus what you see in the book, sometimes you're actually going to see something a little bit different. I always put them in terms of increasing effective nuclear charge. And some of the diagrams in the book actually show one increasing and one decreasing. To me, I'd rather memorize them or learn them all the same way rather than trying to have to remember which one's going up and down. So we'll talk about them all as increasing for those periodic trends. And so that way we can group them together and make it a little bit easier to learn those trends. So here's effective nuclear charge, and notice this is the outermost electrons. We're not talking about any of these kind of intermediate electrons. We're only looking at the outermost electrons, so those in the highest energy level. So thinking about those electrons, if we're looking at um, uh, fluorine, those will be in the n equals 2 level. If we're looking at chlorine, those are going to be in n equals 3 level. So those outermost electrons. And what we see is that as we go up the column, the effective nuclear charge increases. And we want to think about this. Remember, if we have our um, hydrogen, what we look at is we have one proton and one electron. There's no shielding at all between those, and so we're going to see a very strong attractive force between those. As we go down that column, going to lithium, sodium, and potassium, and so on, we have electrons causing shielding, and so as a result, we see a lower effective nuclear charge, so less attractive force between that outermost electron and the nucleus. So we also see the same trend, increasing effective nuclear charge of the outermost electrons. And so what we're doing is basically imagining our periodic table here in the middle. And we're looking at these trends as we go up a column and to the right. And when we talk about this effective nuclear charge increasing as we go from left to right, this is got a lot to do with the size of the atom. And we'll talk about that trend in a few minutes.